If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry, it says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of Alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get matched down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. You, so we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. And shout, shout, lead him. shout out to the big homie, Davey J. <laughs> all right, you guys. We are... <laughs> You're forgiven. Oh my I'll gosh. forgive you for now. So Blessed Amy. We are doing a DJ stream for Nick, and we're on the last song, which is ah! I Am Butterfly, ah! Inagada da Vida. Inagada da Vida. If I'm saying that right. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you're saying it right or wrong. Okay, but he actually had something he wrote on this one. Okay. Released in June of 1968, this is considered to be the earliest popular heavy metal song due to do its disoriented guitars, wicked sounding organ, and haunting vocals. Disoriented or distorted? It's distorted. What did I say? Disoriented? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. You According to drummer to... Ron Bushy, organist vocalist Doug Engel wrote the song one evening while drinking an entire gallon of Red Mountain wine. <laughs> when the inebriated Engel, Engel then played the song for Bushy, who wrote down the lyrics for him, he was slurring his words so badly that what was supposed to be in the Garden of Eden was interpreted by Bushy as in Agata Divida. <laughs> The this guy's is, name is Bushy? This is a proto, that's what it says. This is a proto metal prog metal at its final finest. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy this epic journey. <laughs> it's epic indeed. Oh, how interesting. What? The difference between heaven and hell. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, ready? Yes, we are. Here we are! Let's go. Baseline before. In a god of a freedom, honey, don't you know that I'm loving you? In a god of a freedom, baby, don't you know that I'll always be true? Oh, Oh, won't you come with me and I'll take my hand? Oh, won't you come with me and I'll walk this land? Please take my hand. In a corner of Eden, honey, don't you 
solo on your left? I'm hearing it both sides. Solo? Sounds like a soundtrack for a Quentin Tarantino movie. 
don't know Quentin Tarantino. the progressive stuff. It sounds like, remember that balloon thing that you pull? You <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These drums are killing me right now. This part of the song is killing me right now. Okay, we're coming back. We're coming back. an elephant? No, it's the guitars. Remember he said they were like disoriented? Oh, okay. 
How about no?
way too long that and was, I was way I, too sober for it. I re- <laughs> Okay. Honestly, that's one thing that's like kind of been on my nerves since we've been pregnant. Iron Butterfly. Yeah. All right. Little mics, sh- nothing. Sh- sharing is caring, dear yeah. listeners. So, and I felt those, like this song out, would be better. Just come out the closet. Okay. I all right. I felt like this song would have been come just on better down. off. Stop on by. Better off if it was some sort of influence. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, just too long. This, is a, this, is a, this is a song in metal history. I know. That you have to have under your belt with the full... Sort of range, not uh, apparently they did some sort of three minute version of this for the radio, which to me is I don't even know how how no, is that just, possible. It would just be the funny beginning. It would be, be the beginning in the in the beginning and in, in, in the end. Yeah, I mean. Perkinaw says, "Thank God this song was 17 minutes. You can really tell they did a lot in every one of those precious minutes. Nothing was wasted. It had to be 17 minutes exactly, and nothing else. I am so happy." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, look, I've, I've, uh, you know, <laughs> I had an email thing go back and forth. People were like, you like progressive, you like progressive. I don't, I have a very interesting relationship with progressive. First of all, what year was this song written? It sounded like the 60s, but. Uh, 68, Boom. 68. This is two years. I'm getting my feel. This is two years before Ozzy, before Ozzy and uh, Tony Iommi showed up. Um. So, for the for the metal side of me, the metal like I'm not gonna say metal historian, but um, I'm glad we heard the song. It was a bit I didn't really truly understand what was going on that necessitated the 17 minute songs. Like sometimes, like when we listen to Dream yeah. Theater, Dream Theater will go on like a 55 minute solo. Yeah. And it's like I don't really feel like it's really necessary for the song, but obviously. Whoever it is wanted 6,000 notes in the song. So it's like, oh, okay. That's why I'm not really sure what was happening in this song that that they said, yep, let's make a 17-minute song. And, and, you know, I I don't, you know, there's about a good two or three minutes of just the, the drums, like, cycling back and forth. I, I just didn't understand it. I didn't get it. See, honest to goodness. I didn't so get he it. he made this song after he had drank a whole gallon of wine i really think that if you were like who who did yeah but he's not the only musician well yeah i know but but it was it started that way i just feel like if you were with a crew of your friends especially if it was back in the 60s and everybody was like kind of sitting around smoking and stuff and you were listening to it then the 16 minutes would feel like nothing it would be great wait say that say that part again which part what you just literally just said. I said, if it was like back in the 1960s and you're sitting around with your friends and you guys are all smoking and there's the 16 minute song going on, you don't even feel the 16 That's minutes. hilarious because like- that's literally what Sean just said. Sean goes, drugs, Vin, drugs. These were da- these were days of records. You flipped to side two and just zoned out. That's literally where I feel like this fits. Okay. I, I don't think it fits when you're completely sober. I just don't think it does. Like, I... I think it was pretty interesting that he, what they did with, and you could you could even put in there in a Garden of Eden. What do you when mean? When he was singing it in a Garden of Eden, yeah, yeah in Garden it was Navida, just yeah, funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that that they switched out like that, and I I liked it. I just thought it just <laughs> it was just very long. I just couldn't I just couldn't fuck with the okay, length. Now I'm starting to figure it out. This was at the height of the psychedelic See? movement. Exactly. So you, so I, yeah, I have to think like you people to uh, to understand. <laughs> to, oh, you just came out to all the people. Well, I just what, said I'd drink some. Well, what do you want I me said. to do? No, so apparently you have to be in an altered state of con. Okay, well, I that, feel like it would work so good, and then that the visuals actually that, they that put makes in there, a lot of sense to me. That makes yeah. a lot of sense to me. Although I will say that Pink Floyd, I'm completely sober right now. So. I feel like you could accomplish that with Pink Floyd, but you would get a lot of so much really good music and a crazy soundscape and all the rest of it. Like, I, yeah, but the other moves. thing too is like it just felt so disjointed. It was like, oh, here's a tribal thing. Oh, here's an elephant. Yeah, but... Here's a scratch. Okay. Here's this. Yeah, but again, but I guess an if elephant. you're... <laughs> no, it, it wasn't there now. It did kind of sound like an elephant, but it wasn't. It was the guitar. But I think that, like... Okay, have you have you ever been high and, like, you're, you're very gone? And then, like, some random noise, you're like, whoa. 
You know what I mean? Like, I feel like if you're in one of those situations... Man, those people have really absorbed you into their culture! <laughs> I feel like it'd be, like, one of those where, like, it's not, like, this constant sound, but it's, like, enough where you're, like, whoa, oh my god. Like that, like I feel like it's that sort of feel. Okay. So I feel like that this song would be really fun, like you know, for people that, you know, <laughs> if it's legal where you are, smoke them if you got them. <laughs> well, it's so weird. Like people, are like what the hell is going on with Biden? He could do an elect uh, executive whatever and and make weed completely. He won't do it. It's like, bro, you gotta get a win somewhere. I know. <laughs> get a win somewhere, Biden. You know what I'm saying? Did, did, did JB show you that video where he's shaking that guy's hand? A lot of walk bar. The, this, I saw it. I did. It's getting to it. the you point now where I'm like... Shook at the... It was a microphone, babe. The microphone. That's what he turned to. How... 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 There's nobody how, there. How, how damaging would it be for Biden to shoot like a, a YouTube video in his basement, right? And he goes, uh, hey guys, guess what I'm going to do? Him and Elon Musk, right? Because Elon showed up on the Joe Rogan show. So Biden and Joe Ro and, and, and Elon Musk. And Elon goes, this is about to be lit. And then he, he signs the executive order. Free weed for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like what? his popularity would skyrocket. What? It can't be worse. <laughs> Hear me. Hear me, President Biden. It can't oh be worse than you shaking hands with the invisible man, sir. Uh, yeah. um, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, it, so we that, have to be honest, like we say in the review, we can't guarantee a positive review. Yeah. I objectively did not like this song. I felt like that bass line was hard as fuck. It's probably the hardest bass line we've heard in a while. Yeah. It just makes you feel cool. If I could play bass, I would play that and feel so cool playing that line. <laughs> it makes you feel like a badass. But the rest of the song to me was... Uh, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. It's funny because I was going to mention Jambi, but Jambi isn't here, but Jambi's a bass player. Like the... Dum -bum 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 -bum. See, Jimmy had that like real like funky bass line for the uh -huh. song that I that the first time I was like, oh, it's kind of uh, that changes the entire flavor. Then I was like, yes, this is a bass that's actually making himself necessary instead of whatever, mm -hmm. but whatever. But um, yeah, the rest of the song, bro, I wasn't feeling it. I'm sorry, I wasn't Honestly, feeling okay, it. This is this is the thing. It's the first time I've ever rated something this way. This song is a four. Sober Sorry gives it a four. Sober Sorry. High Sorry would give it a no, uh, 8.9. Good thing Peter isn't here. The memes that would be generated from, from this uh, this little statement thing. But she got Sober Sorry because I'm pregnant, so. <laughs> and Sean's got it as a 10. A 10? Uh, you must be smoking something real good right now. All right, let me see if Perkinos. Let's see if Perkinos uh, can can convince me. Five out of ten. The one riff was good for the first few minutes, I guess. Otherwise, I hope to never listen to this again. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sorry, Nick. The song is iconic. All right, it's a two for me. <laughs> I just don't. I don't lie. You guys know how I am. Yo, I'm not, I, 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 a I, I tell you guys. <laughs> oh my God, Amy is. Such a savage right now. Uh, it's a two for me, man. Like I, yikes. I understand its place in metal history. I'm I'm very glad that we listened to it. Um, but I cannot Mad tell. A giving it a ten. I can't tell a lie. I can't tell a lie. I did, I, oh, I I wasn't feeling the song, bro. What can I do? What can be done? There's nothing that can be done. I wasn't feel feeling feel the it. song. I, I, but the, the rest of the songs in the track, uh, the thing were great. But, uh, oh, I just had a hard time. I had a hard time with it. All right, what did you give it? I gave it a four. I gave it, I already rated it. Sober Story gives it a four. Sober Story gives it a, oh, you said you've never done this before? What, you've never rated a song sober before? Congratulations. No. Wow. I'll get you a pin, inshallah. You did. <laughs> 
what would unsober story give it? You probably give it a higher score. I said unsober story gave it like an eight point nine or a nine. I can't. So what did you average it out? Did you average it out between sober so- no, story and No, I can just unsober? imagine what it would feel like to be high. And so it's like a six, this. like a six, right? So it's like a nine, and what did you give it? A four? I gave it a four. So that's a 13 divided by two is what, six and a half? So it's basically between your two personas at six and a half. Me, it's just getting straight to. There you are, dear listener. We have more uh, streams coming from you in a very short period of time. In short order. In short order, uh, and uh, we got some other pretty cool things coming up coming up already. Okay. Um, having said that, dear listener, much love to all you beautiful people. Take care of each other. Love your neighbor. All that good jazz. We got to give uh, the glockenspiel to the big homie, the big homie, the man of the hour. <laughs> gang, gang, gang. Let's do it Shout again. Out to DJ Nick. Gang, gang, gang. Let's try it one more time. Boop, 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 boop. All right, there, listen. Take care of each other. Uh, Shutting down 45 was my favorite, I think. Uh, Skid Row one was really good, too. The Skid Row one was my, yeah, was, probably, was by, yeah. by far, by far. That 45 song, though, is 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 uh, yeah. coming very, very, very close to hitting one of my playlists. Very. All right, guys. Have a good night. Very, very, very close to being on the playlist. Okay, uh, what's next? What's next is um, <laughs> what's next is your life, and apparently you're going fishing. So take care of yourself as you're going fishing, my guy. All right, and uh, come back for more. Vin out. Sorry out. Go.